Hey, this is Erica Chikowski with DevOps.com, and I'm on the floor at DevOps Enterprise Summit. I'm talking to Justin Collins. He's an AppSec engineer for SurveyMonkey, uh, formerly of Twitter. And uh, today he, he talked in front of the crowd a little bit about something near and dear to my heart, which is application security. I've covered security for a long time, so I know the pain. <laughs> um, Justin, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about kind of the main takeaway that you hope that other people will take from your experiences. Can, can you talk a little bit ab about that? Sure. So the, the first main takeaway is to move from a reactive stance, mm -hmm. especially in vulnerabilities, to being proactive about fixing them. So what I like to say is don't fix vulnerabilities, prevent them from happening in the first place. Love it, love it, yep. <laughs> that makes sense, and yet, that's not what we're doing right now, is it? N no. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we get from A to B? I mean, that, you know, it's fine and dandy to say that. Sure. It's a nice sound bite, but how does, how does that actually happen? So the approach that I think works and what we we didn't plan to do, but what we ended up doing at Twitter is you start to see problems. You see a vulnerability that keeps coming up over and over again. Right. And then you start thinking, what can I do so that this just doesn't happen again? Right. Is there code that I can write? Is there automation I can put in place? Can I write a test? Uh, or do I need to you know, run some kind of dynamic scan and check for this one specific issue that we know has happened, right. so we know what to look for. We just need to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Right, yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, and it seems like you know, a lot of security people at large, you, know, you go to conferences like RSA or something like that, they're kind of scared of DevOps, quite honestly. Sure. But if the, the smart ones see it as an opportunity, uh, can you talk a little bit about this whole idea of the security guy and, and DevOps and how things are going to need to change? Sure. So I, I mean, on one hand, DevOps, uh, in the sense of deploying code faster and easier, it's a good thing. Right. Because when I want to fix a security vulnerability, I want it to be fixed quickly right. and easily. Yeah. And ideally, you know, if if necessary, I can write a patch and push it out. Right. But if there's some lengthy involved deploy process, I can't even be a part of that. On the other hand, it scares us as uh -huh. security people because the faster code goes out, the less opportunity we have to actually look at it, right. to question it, to understand what's being written. So it's a trade-off in that sense. Right. On the other hand, I would say that even when you have a lot of time to review things, you still don't That's feel like right. you have enough time to review it. That's right, and your whole point is that automation is, is kind of that key differentiator there. That's what's gonna enable the change, regardless of whether you go to DevOps or, or not. Sure, I, I think the amazing thing about automation for security is the idea of thinking, we have solved this problem. We had, um, you know, let's say, some code pattern that kept popping up Mm -hmm. Well, if you write a test or uh, have some tool in place checking for that pattern, right. you have assurance that that pattern is not going to happen again. And if it does, you'll know about it. Right. And that's just an amazing level of assurance as a security person. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Um, kind of stepping away from the security end of things and just talking in, in terms of you know looking at different case studies. Um, you worked at Twitter. Twitter is always kind of put up on the pedestal when it comes to DevOps uh, successes, but people get a little bit intimidated by that. Can you talk a little bit about how you know they really shouldn't be? <laughs> yes. So uh, part of my talk today was, I hope, reassuring people that Twitter is not as amazing as they may <laughs> think it is. And starting off with the FTC order, 2009 to 2011, right. and the mistakes that were called out by the FTC were very basic mistakes. Not having rate limiting on logins, not having restrictions on admin access. Right. These are very simple things that I think everyone can relate to as these are real problems, not some sophisticated attack or malware that right. you know, no one has hope of stopping. Right? And then the things that we put in place, the automation we put in place, it wasn't some amazing feat of right. engineering. It was very simple things that just happened to be very effective. That makes sense. Well, hey, Justin, I appreciate you stopping by and giving your perspective, and hopefully we'll see you again next year. Maybe. All right. <laughs> Thanks.